Okay, um, thank you, Fernando, for your nice introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here to listen to my presentation on advanced thermal management for future electrified transport. I'm Feng Yu Zhang. Um, I'm putting my email here if um, later your questions is not being answered due to the time of the limit. So today's uh, contents on my slides will be, one is a very brief introduction about myself, and then we will walk through the thermal management, why we are talking about thermal management, as well as the current development in this perspective for electrical machines. And then following that, we will cover two mainly advanced cooling techniques. One is oil spray cooling, as well as oil impingement cooling. Um, it will be about modeling, as well as experimental testing. And finally, we will conclude the, um, today's talk. So I just give a very brief introduction about myself. Um, I'm senior research fellow and Annie McLaren fellow in electrical drive systems at the University of Nottingham. Um, so I have very special interest in electrical machines thermal management. So I have multi background in electrical and thermal engineering. I graduated just before COVID. Actually, I got my certificate 2020 March, then subsequently working at University of Nottingham um, as research fellow, then senior research fellow. Um, I didn't put much about University of Nottingham as well as the electrical machines testing facilities due to the time limit. Um, but if you are interested, I, I would be very happy to share after this meeting after this talk. So I think everyone here is quite familiar with electrification um, because it's the only realistic way and uh, technology to decarbonize, for example, um, aircraft. Um, it's one of the most challenging area to achieve the zero carbon 2050. And electrical machines, I think we'll know that are at the center um, of this electrification architecture. So for this perspective, we all know um, power density, which is kilowatt per kilogram, is quite important. Um, for example, we want to improve them dramatically um, to 2026, about 13 kilowatt per kilogram. So this is um, the roadmap from the UK Aerospace Technology Institute. And uh, UK Aerospace Technology Institute defines the challenges, for example, for the UK civil aerospace sector. And uh, to achieve that, um, University of Nottingham, actually, we are leading the thermal management for electrical system, the roadmap here. So we identified, for example, the oil impingement cooling and the oil spray cooling as well the cryogenic cooling will be a very good techniques and will be the way for the next generation electrical machines. Um, due to the time limit today, we'll cover these two um, because these two are mostly used in automotives, for, for example. And then we will not um, mention about the detail, the cryogenic um, cooling systems in this presentation. And so for people, um, if um, I don't know the background of the audience, um, but just to keep everyone on the same page, because people may not be very familiar with thermal management. Um, so I put here is why it is important for thermal management. Um, one important thing is because we always want to push very high current for high power. But when we put more power due to all of the losses, which we shown here, um, difficult to remove out, and that will break the insulation system, for example, around the copper. And that, for example, will make the machine fail. It doesn't work. 
or it will shorten the lifespan of the machine. So the losses, um, which mainly consist of four parts. So one is the state winding areas, which where my laser point are. Um, for example, allocated into the copper, which includes DC losses as well as the AC losses as well. So AC losses due to the skin effects as well as the eddy currents as well. And there will be the iron loss and the stage core as well as the rotor core, magnet losses as well. Then there will be the mechanical losses, which includes the bearing losses, for example, or the windage loss in the air gap or the oil friction loss if we use oil spray cooling or impingement cooling later. So this is how it looks like of the machine. And here it just quickly show if we have cooling outside of the jacket, outside of the state lamination in the housing jacket, which I will detail later, of course, on the cooling techniques, is the hotter spot will be located in the center of this. And the reason for that is because, um, as in the previous slide, which we show there are lots of losses generated within the winding, while on the other side, the losses are very difficult to be removed out. For example, this is one slot, as shown here, and we have the copper, we have the insulation, the green part, we have the resin, which is a pink or purple-ish, and then we have this slow liner. So um, there are lots of losses generated within, uh, but the heat transfer ability, which for this slot, we mentioned about the equivalent thermal conductivity is very low. And that limits the losses to be dissipated to the coolant. So just to give you one idea of how the value, how low the value will be. The copper, the thermal conductivity is 400. The resin is 0 0.2, insulation is 0 0.2. Even though we have high fuel factor of the copper, but in the end, the equivalent of thermal conductivity is usually is less than one. So it's much lower than copper, for example, at 400. And uh, I mentioned earlier in the previous slide, for example, here, we have the hot spot in the slot. And in most of the cases, for example, like the jacket cooling, when we have cooling in the housing jacket, the hot spot is located in the unwinding area, in the unwinding here. Um, why I mentioned here, I can um, tell the reason later. This is why mainly we, we use the oil spray or the impingement cooling. And this slice is to show to target, to remove the heat to the coolant or how get to remove them out. This slice is quickly shown the development of the current technologies. So um, for the coolant, um, I listed four here, but we will mainly cover the air, which is quite common. Water, oil, gradient cooling, we will not cover here. And this is a figure to show the coolant medium, their heat transfer ability. Basically, it is a heat transfer quotient evaluated by this value. For example, air natural convection, which means you have the thing outside the machine, but you don't have any other cooling method. The heat transfer quotient um, is quite low. It's about 50, for example, the maximum already. And if you have the fan, it will be higher to 200, 300. And there will be the water deck to cooling. Um, it will be about thousands. But if we use the oil impingement or the oil spray cooling, that will push up higher to higher heat transcription. So what do I mean by impingement or spray cooling? For example, this is a very quick one to show the oil impingement cooling. Here it shows a semi-flooded cooling, oil cooling, which is developed by University of Nottingham. So we have the oil inlet, 
then impingements to the unwinding, and then go through the slow channel or state lamination ducts to the other side, then goes out. It means semi-flooded cooling because we use a sleeve to separate the stator and the rotor, so there will be not much losses in the air gap ranging, for example. And there will be other cooling improvements. For example, there will be a pipe. It can be water cooled and winding because we mentioned earlier the um, hot spot is located in the unwinding area. This technology is very efficient to remove the heat, but it's very laboratory designed. We need to really careful design this uh, due to the water characteristics. And there will be other cooling methods like you put direct cooling uh, coolant in the slot or we change the slot dimensions or not dimensions like back iron extension, um, like one part extended from back iron into the slot to improve the thermal conditions. So for this are the current department and to the topic we'll focus on the oil spray and the jet cooling of electrical machines. So this is how it looks like visually and uh, of the machine as it rotates and we could say um, from the image earlier. So what do we mean by spray and impingement cooling? There are quite a uh, lot of people cannot tell the difference. So this is why I put them separately just to explain what is the oil spray cooling. Oil spray cooling, which defines here, as we could see, um, it has very small droplets of the oil. So it's 10 to 30 micromillimeter or 50 to 100. While for the oil impingement, as we could see from here, so it's much bigger droplets, um, bigger size compared to the spray cooling. Then, um, but as we could see already, because it's very small droplet, we will need the nozzles. So we need nozzles to put the, for high pressure, then to get the oil out to have the um, small droplet. And because we need high pressure, that will raise out high cost for this cooling, as well as the manufacturing um, ability or manufacturing ability is more complicated compared to the oil impingement cooling. But um, in the previous slide, you already noticed that heat transfer ability for the oil spray cooling actually is much higher than the oil impingement cooling. So there are pros and cons, um, which is shown here in this figure. So the research areas, um, what um, in the in, in University of Nottingham is covered like below um, because I want to mention here as well, as we can see from here, the winding is specifically for um, helping winding. Uh, the cooling is very efficient for the helping winding. So the um, test rig, which we have been doing, is covers to state winding layers of helping windings up to eight layers. And we have different nozzle types as well as numbers. So for example, how many nozzles will play here and what the locations will be. And the speed of the shaft is up to 12,000 RPM, as well as there will be the rotor splash cooling, the shaft cooling, and that will cover the modeling, which I will detail later as well. Um, the cooling, how to simulate the, this technology as is very complex, as well as the experimental testing. So for the um, modeling th section, it's, it's more about the heat transfer coefficient. So because um, for all the cooling methods, we need to identify what the values will be that will be implemented to the thermal modeling. So we use the ANSYS flow, uh, fluent as well as party work to generate heat transformation determination. And there will be a full machine simulation, which I will tell why we'll need a full machine for oil spray or impingement cooling. 
and there will be the experimental testing, how we design the test rig, as well as, as, well as the testing plan, um, which test we will conduct, the flowage, um, et cetera. So this one is about the spray cooling. So I mentioned earlier, so you, we use the numerical method to get the heat transcription um, of the uh, fluid, while for the whole system, the simulation, we use the thermal network, for example, as shown here. And um, basically we have different nodes to represent different section of the machine. Then later we uh, calculate thermal resistance to get the temperature distribution out. So for the traditional cold round one is, which I mentioned in the previous slide about the current development, um, you relate the temperature is quite uniform for all the slots. And uh, this is why we could use the half slot um, of the machine to simulate how the temperature will be distributed. While for the oil spraying put helping windings, it's very challenging um, because due to the um, oil gravity effects and also the nozzles, the complex dynamics of the oil, the heat transcription as well as the convection area for different slots are different. So if we use half slot, that will not be accurate to get the highest temperature as well as the average temperature out. So we will need to use the full machine um, thermal network. And for this, um, so I mentioned previously about the heat transcription as well as the convection areas. So in the thermal network, um, how we define these two values. So in this slide, which I showed actually three different ways, we can determine the heat transcription, and then later we can compare, compare which is more accurate. So this is just an example of a, 70, a 72 slot machine, two layers, and then we have 12 nozzles to spray on them as we can see from here. So one MP transcription method is very straightforward. It's basically we use the average. So we assume all the slots are same, then we get a heat transcription. And the second method is to aiming at different nozzles. For example, we have 12 nozzles and we, we did consider the oil gravity effects and we use for example, like nozzle one here. So the red, which means um, the nozzle directly impingements or sprayed to this slot, then it has very high heat transcription. Well, similarly, we have the green color here and the black color here. So we would group over the same color as one heat transcription um, and uh, for all the slots, like for example, like here, the red, all the slots will use one heat transcription. The third one is very complex. So basically we take the oil gravity effects into consideration and we assume the heat transcription for different slots is different. So that's for the heat transcription determination. Then we have the convection area as well, because due to the uh, nature of the oil. So sometimes it impingements on one surface area, but some surface area like the blue will be hidden, for example, um, by other windings. So there are three different ways for effective convection areas as well. One is basically we calculate the surface area of the full surface area and we use them. And the other way will be we take one effect, say, for example, the blue area here is hidden. There's no oil. So effective area, we use one coefficient to take that impact. The third one is complex, will be dependent on different slots. It will be different from slot to slot. And so this is how we have the unwinding methodology. 
So for heat-trans constant, we have three, which we mentioned in previous slide. And for the convection areas, so we have three different ways as well. Then for the methodology, we came up, we combine them, try different sequence. Then we combine, we have four unwinding methodologies as we could see from here. Then we put this in the four machine simulations. And so we have unwinding simulation methodology one, two, three, and four. And we compare the average temperature as well as the peak temperature of the machine. So as we could see from here, so the last one, which we take consideration of different nozzles, as well as all your gravity effects into consideration, and we get the most uh, consistent with experimental results, as we could see from here. So that's about the modeling for the oil spray and impingement cooling. And uh, the, this slide will just to summarize what we covered today. So one is about the importance of thermal management, as well as the current technologies for the thermal management of machines. Then we talked a bit more on the oil spray as well as impingement cooling. That includes a full machine modeling as well as the testing includes the nozzle numbers as well. So that will be my end of my presentation. And thank you. I will look forward to your questions later. Thank you, Fang Yu. Um, we can now proceed with um, Peter's presentation. So Peter, thank the you. floor is yours. Thank you very much and uh, very welcome uh, to everyone um, on on the other side of the of the screens. Um, I'd like to uh, talk to you uh, today uh, about the rotor production, induction uh, rotor productions of VLAND. Uh, yes, my screen is uh, to see. Okay. So um, my name is Peter Siladi. I'm the uh, managing director of uh, VLAND Detection Systems, uh, part of the uh, VLAND uh, group. And uh, as uh, so, I, I am in the induction motor market for over 20 years in the, in the meantime. A uh, couple of words uh, about uh, VLAND. Um, VLAND is a over 200 years old uh, company. Um, started in 1820 uh, when um, people have tried uh, to cast uh, bells uh, at that time. And uh, since, since then, um, still uh, uh, family and uh, um, shareholders owned uh, company is growing on the market dramatically. Uh, everything is around uh, copper. Uh, what we do. Uh, this is a, um, a picture, uh, a selection uh, of, uh, of the uh, products, what we are producing. Uh, these are strips and sheets, uh, different kind of uh, materials, uh, different uh, tubes and wires and rods. Uh, these are the, the major two uh, business units. Uh, the other two business uh, units uh, our thermal uh, solutions, uh, heat exchangers, and uh, so on. And the, the most uh, interesting, uh, maybe for you, uh, for the audience uh, today, is the uh, e-mobility components. Uh, we are going to talk about it more in details. Um, within the e-mobility uh, components, uh, we have motor components, battery components, shunts, connector rings, uh, um, converter, part, inverter uh, connection parts. But the most important is uh, today uh, the rotors. Uh, we have uh, two types of uh, rotor production or technology uh, we are uh, proposing on the market. Uh, the one we call it as a assembled uh, rotor. Uh, production uh, and uh, the other one is die casting uh, version, uh, which we go into more details. Uh, 
few words about the, the fabricated uh, copper rotors uh, as our uh, high performance uh, special uh, product where we produce uh, internally uh, end laminations and the rings uh, out of uh, copper and we produce also the bars uh, for the for the rotor we put them together and with laser welding as you can see on the video uh, we laser weld the laminations the end laminations to the bars. It is a, a very good solution for special applications for uh, rotors with very high speed, very high uh, strength, where we are also able to put uh, end ring uh, materials out of uh, special copper alloys uh, to strengthen the rotor and uh, using the uh, electric uh, ETP copper for, um, for the bars. So uh, the other solution uh, we are proposing is the die casting. And I would like to talk to you about uh, the die casting uh, today more in details because this is something unique um, on the market. Uh, I will show you uh, later uh, how and uh, what we are uh, doing uh, to improve the performance of uh, your motor. Uh, to achieve uh, this kind of uh, uh, unique uh, quality uh, with uh, sometimes not even measurable uh, porosity level. We call it ZPR, zero porosity rotor. So let's see how, um, what is the, the difference between the ZPR technology and what is the uh, standard technology. So here, you can see a, a standard uh, casting methodology um, of, a, of a standard induction rotor. You can see that uh, on the bottom of the, of the rotor, uh, there are, just a second, I'm showing you the laser pointer, yes. So here you can see, um, this is the standard way of uh, casting. You have um, casting in gate points. Uh, you can have it on, on that uh, face of the uh, rotor, you can have it from the side of the ending, but uh, at the end, um, the, the result is the same, that you have a very turbulent filling uh, in your rotor. There are slots, they are immediately filled after the casting process started, as you can see uh, here, for example. And there are also uh, slots in between uh, where the slots are only filled with a so-called back filling, as you can uh, follow on the, on the screen. The material is coming from the top uh, down with the back filling uh, to fill all uh, the slots. Uh, the result uh, uh, on that is uh, that uh, you have everywhere porosities, you have everywhere uh, gases, process gases, uh, um, uh, porosities uh, in, the, in the rotor, uh, not only in the end ring where you can measure it uh, very easily, but also in the slots. Uh, this 10% uh, positive level is nothing unusual. That's uh, quite normal for, uh, for a standard uh, applications. So what are we doing against it? Uh, we have developed uh, a technology, uh, as I said, uh, ZPR, where we are able to fill first the bottom end ring completely and after when the end ring is completely filled with the same pressure, we push the metal through the slots. As you can see, it's a very equal, very uh, simultaneous uh, filling of the slots. And uh, at the top of the, of the uh, rotor, the top of the tooling, we also have some um, evacuation system to get rid of the process gases. And this um, uh, results uh, of a very good quality uh, in the end rings and also in the, in the bars. Uh, obviously this uh, uh, 0.01 or 0 0.001 is a, is a theoretical uh, value. We can reach it, um, but uh, 
during the cereal production, we are talking about uh, less than 1%, so 0.x percent. That's the, the, the real value uh, during cereal production. Very boring pictures uh, for you. You don't see anything, but that's the good thing uh, because you don't want to see the porosities, uh, either upper or uh, the, uh, lower short circuit ring or the slots uh, everywhere. Uh, we have got rid of the of the porosities. So the next question is: Okay, porosity is fine, but uh, as we are uh, mainly casting uh, copper, what is the problem? What uh, um, uh, happens uh, with your lamination uh, lamination structure? Uh, is there any any problem uh, due to the <coughs> sorry? due to the high uh, temperature of uh, copper. So as you can see uh, on these um, uh, magnified uh, pictures, uh, nothing happens uh, with the corn structure of the lamination of the electrical steel. Uh, you even see a very tiny um, uh, gap uh, due to the shrinkage uh, of the uh, copper between electrical steel and uh, copper in the bar. Um, but uh, at the end, uh, you don't have any problem uh, during copper casting in the rotor. The next um, uh, uh, video shows uh, for you the temperature rise uh, in the uh, in the laminations. So as you can see, in between the the bars, the hottest uh, area uh, occurs. Uh, and uh, as you have uh, maybe seen on the, on the, uh, the video, the maximum uh, temperature, which uh, has uh, occurred here between the, the slots uh, during the casting process was 648 or something um, centigrade, which is way below the temperature resistance of the C5 coating. So, and you also can see here that uh, after nine seconds, uh, after the casting process has started, we are already below 500, 500 degrees C. So uh, the process itself uh, is not slower than the, the, the standard conventional uh, casting process, and it can be uh, adapted, can be used not only for aluminum, but also for copper casting. Uh, and uh, still nothing happens with, uh, with your uh, laminations. So what is the advantage of, uh, of, this, uh, of this, this technology? So the first, and, and I think the major advantage of it is that you as a motor designer are completely free on designing whatever uh, fits uh, for your applications. You can see here a couple of um, strange uh, slot uh, designs. Uh, you can also see that the, the minimum uh, what we have cast already uh, was here at the bottom of the uh, of the bars uh, of the slots uh, was less than 0.8 millimeter width, so radius 0.38, in uh, in uh, diameter here uh, 0.76. Um, on the on the top it was 1.2 millimeter, uh, and this on 200 millimeter stack height. So we can uh, see that until now every rotor throat design we have seen, we were able to cast. So therefore, uh, we can also ask and, and uh, uh, give the, the, uh, the, the task uh, for, for all the motor designers, uh, please design uh, rotors, induction rotors, uh, which fits for your 
application, uh, whatever strange design uh, you would be able to, uh, to think of, please do. Uh, please give us the, the possibility to cast it uh, because in 99%, uh, uh, we will be able to, to cast uh, this. Also, we are able to uh, put some, some uh, reinforcements uh, in the end rings in case uh, the cast uh, um, material, the cast rotor would not be able to um, go with the high speed, uh, what you are looking for, we are able to put some additional materials in it. An additional um, advantage of the technology is that uh, due to the due to the very smooth filling of the rotor, we do not mix uh, the material, the casting material uh, with air, with uh, processed gases, and therefore the electrical conductivity uh, in the rotor is much higher than on the uh, in standard industrial process it happens. As you maybe already know that uh, for aluminium, 25, 28 megasiemens per meter, it's quite normal. For a cast uh, rotor, we are able to reach uh, 35, uh, sometimes 36 megasiemens per meter, or copper, uh, we are definitely above 57 megasiemens per meter, which is just one megasiemens per meter below uh, the uh, theoretical electrical conductivity of copper before casting. So this also gives uh, your design, your motor, an additional push, an additional improvement, uh, a step forward uh, to, to push your motors uh, up to the limit. And we heard uh, um, about the cooling uh, possibilities, uh, cooling uh, strategies before. Uh, obviously, that's a, a very important um, thing for, for your motors because as further you push to the limit as further you use, for example, ZPR for your uh, induction motor, um, you can use additional um, cooling strategies as well. But uh, due to this uh, technology, uh, what we are offering and uh, the, the heat transfer, um, the temperature rise in the rotor will be not uh, as high as with the standard technology because of the higher electrical conductivity or rotor is running on lower temperature. And obviously, if you have uh, a stable production, uh, a stable um, casting procedure uh, where you do not have uh, porosities, then uh, the, the process stability is on a much higher level. And uh, you can uh, say that at least from the casting uh, point of view, you have a very, very uh, smooth, very stable production. You do not have uh, a very a high variancy in your uh, motor production. And one more thing uh, I would like to uh, share with you, which is very important uh, for the whole uh, Villand uh, group is that uh, we have uh, set the target that at uh, 2045 we will be net zero uh, on the uh, carbon put footprint uh, point of view. Uh, we are electrification. Uh, we are electrifying all of uh, our plants. Uh, we use a lot of renewable energies. We have just uh, started uh, to build uh, one of the biggest. Um, uh, solar plants uh, in uh, southern Germany, and uh, we also improving and increasing the recycling uh, content uh, in our production. As you know, copper is is endless uh, recycle bar, so we uh, see a very good future, very good potential on that. So, thank you very much for your um, attention, and uh, I will be also very happy to uh, answer your question if there are any. Thank you very much.